What you see in front of you is an IBM PS2 Model 50. This is one of the original PS2 models released by IBM in 1987. It's the mid-range model above both models 25 and 30 and below models 60 and 80. This particular model comes with one megabyte of RAM on the motherboard, which is fixed on the motherboard. You cannot upgrade the RAM on the motherboard. It has a 10 megahertz uh, Intel 80286 processor, and this does have the microchannel bus. The floppy drive is 144 megabyte, three and a half inch, and the hard drive is 20 megabytes. Uh, the IBM PS2 was IBM's attempt to regain control over the personal computer market after its previous models such as the uh, PC, XT, and AT were easily cloned by competitors. Uh, the microchannel bus was proprietary to IBM and had extremely high licensing fees which prevented its adoption by um, other computer manufacturers. One of the nice things about the PS2 that is very easy to disassemble, so I'll just open this up and show you how easy it is. There are two thumb screws on the back, which are easy to loosen. And the case just slides forward a little bit. And that's all. Once the case is open, you can see that uh, I have here an extender cable. So, this is a space for a second floppy drive. And this cable here just takes the floppy signal out to a breakout in the back so that you could plug in an external floppy drive. At the time these were released, a lot of software still came on five and a quarter inch floppies. And as these computers don't have a spot for a five and a quarter inch floppy, uh, IBM offered an external five and a quarter inch floppy drive which plugs into the rear via this breakout cable. <coughs> so to move the floppy drive, there's a tab here that you lift up and this simply pulls forward and is removed. I'm going to just take this back for now. This is the hard drive back here. If I can move this a little bit closer. So to remove the hard drive, there are two pins down here. So they push on those pins and ease the hard drive back this is not as easy as the floppy drive is. The hard drive then lifts out. As you can see, it is 20 megabytes, type 30, and it is an IBM hard drive. I believe this is um, the ST506 interface. I don't think the Model 50 had the more advanced SD drives, and it's definitely not SCSI. Once the hard drive is out, and the hard drive controller card can be moved with the, via these little tabs here. I believe on the Model 50Z, this card is simply a riser, but on the Model 50, this card actually is the hard drive controller. Another card which this computer has installed is the memory expansion. This is a full 2 megabytes of memory expansion, since the motherboard is locked at 1 megabyte, so this machine, with this, with this card installed, has a total of megabytes of RAM. Once that is out, the rest of the system is easily disassembled. Uh, down here in the front there's this little tool which can be lifted up. And this tool is used to pry these little plastic rivets up. Since they're old, they don't always come up all that easily, but I'm going to show when they were new and not as good old flexible plastic. They would come up much easier. Maybe anyway. So 
with these two removed, the fan simply lifts off. As you can see, it has a little edge connector down there to plug into the motherboard, so there's no cables for the fan. So once all these are up, the chassis will lift out. Uh, one word of advice is on the Model 50, once you lift the chassis out, the clock battery and CMOS battery here comes with it, so that will erase everything you have in the CMOS memory. So if you don't have your reference diskette with all of the adapter files for your expansion cards, you don't want to do this, but I do happen to have a reference diskette. So with all of those rivets lifted up, this should simply just lift out. And with that out of the way, we are down to the bare motherboard. As you can see, we have our two SIMs over here with 5 or 12K each. This is the plug-in for the riser for the floppy card, which is just a riser. There are no electronics on that. As you can see, the, the motherboard plugs into the power supply with an edge connector down here. So there's no cables there either. In fact, the only cable in this computer is this uh, floppy breakout cable. So if this wasn't in, there would be no cables at all on this computer. Uh, down here we have a motherboard. This chip here is the 286 processor. And I have a couple other controller chips. Uh, these slots down here are the MCA slots. And I believe this one here, which is a little bit longer than the others, is a is made for a video card. This extra down here I believe allows the video to be redirected into the VGA connector on the back of the computer. So, now that this is all apart and you've seen all of the inside and everything, I'll put this back together and give you a little demonstration of this computer. Okay, so I've got a monitor in the back, I've got this um, keyboard here. This keyboard actually came with this computer, and I've got a generic PS2 mouse because I don't have the original mouse that came with this computer, or any um, IBM PS2 mice at all. So, um, the hard drive in this computer actually makes some interesting sounds. Sound like makes like a kind of like a squeaking sound when it seeks. So I'm going to put the camera on top of the computer so that hopefully you can hear that sound and then I'll turn it on and give a little demonstration of Windows. It's a little close. Okay, so I'm turning it on now. Uh, squeaking kind of like almost like a scrubbing sound is the hard drive. And we have Windows. So because this is the 286 processor with the extended memory, I got Windows 2.11 for 286 on here. And as you can see, it can take advantage of the full 3 megs of memory. 
So on here I have Microsoft Word. Here the hard drive seek as it loads. This is Microsoft Word for Windows 1.0. I believe they had at least two versions of Word for Windows before they um, standardized the version numbers across DOS, Windows, and I believe Mac OS. So the version Microsoft Word for Windows 1.0 and 2.0, and then the version after that, everything was version 6.0. There could have been a version 3.0, but I don't recall ever seeing one. But they did standardize everything on version 6.0, so you had uh, I believe that was in the early 90s, you had Word for DOS 6.0, Word for Windows 6.0, and I believe Word for Mac OS 6.0 as well. So one of my favorite things about this version of Word is that right on the toolbar it has the small caps option. And small caps are different from tall caps. As you can see, we have the small caps here and the regular caps here. I don't know why they included this here because you know, very few places use the small caps like this, but I think it's an interesting feature. And of course, Windows 2.0 has no color icons. That didn't come into Windows 3.0. I also have Microsoft Excel, and this is version 2.0 because they standardized the Microsoft Excels pretty early. Uh, version 1.0 was Mac only, and version 2.0 was both Windows and Mac. And if you purchased this version of Excel and didn't have Windows, Excel itself actually came with um, enough Windows uh, features with it so that you could just run Excel from the command line and it would launch you into a environment like this. Of course you wouldn't have the MS-DOS executive so the only program you could run in that environment would be Excel, but it still had the regular Windows features and pretty much identical as to running it in Windows. Now one interesting thing that I've noticed is that um, each of these about boxes and each of the programs reports how much memory you have free, but each one gives you a different amount. So this tells us we have 141 kilobytes free of conventional memory and 731 free of expansion expanded memory, although that's not the total expanded memory that we have in the system. We have 2 megabytes of expanded memory. If we go into Word, however, Word tells us that we have 683 kilobytes free of expanded memory and only 92 of conventional memory. And Windows itself will tell us something different. Windows tells us we have 205 kilobytes of conventional memory, but 40 kilobytes of expanded memory. So I'm not sure whether it has to do with how Windows reports to programs how much memory is in the system or what, but everyone seems to be very really confused on the uh, amount of how much memory they have. But that is the IBM PS2 Model 50. See it has the VGA graphics. Uh, this does not have any higher resolution than 640 by 40 by 16 or 320 by 200 by 256. If you wanted higher resolution than that you would have to get either an IBM 8514A or an IBM XGA or similar to MCA video adapters. But that is the PS2 Model 50. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Let's close out of Windows here. You can hear the hard drive seeking. But that is the IBM PS2 Model 50. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration.